our Ravine friend. All right, since we can't be together, more Nicole is going to read you some of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory so that we can actually finish the book at some point before you see him. So we finished up right when they discovered what the looking around sweets are. If you guys can remember what the square sweets that look around, what the joke is with them, I want you guys to see if you can tell your parents about that. So we are about to start chapter 24, Veruca in the Nut Room. Now I want to remind you guys that when we're reading at school, you guys are really close so you guys can see the book. I'm only going to hold the book up if there's a picture. So if you don't see it, that means there's no picture on the pages, okay? All right. We're going to start chapter 24 right now. Chapter 24, Baruka in the Nut Room. Mr. Wonka rushed on down the corridor. The Nut Room, it said on the next door they came to. All right, said Mr. Wonka. Stop here for a moment and catch your breath and take a peek through the glass panel of this door. But don't go in. Whatever you do, don't go into the Nut Room. If you go in, you'll disturb the squirrels. Everyone crowded around the door. Oh, look, Grandpa, look, cried Charlie. Squirrels, shouted Veruca Salt. Crikey, said Mike TV. It was an amazing sight. One hundred squirrels were seated upon high stools around a large table. On the table, there were mounds and mounds of walnuts, and the squirrels were all working away like mad, shelling the walnuts at a tremendous speed. These squirrels are specially trained for getting the nuts out of walnuts, Mr. Wonka explained. Why use squirrels, Mike TV asked. Why not use Oompa Loompas? Because, said Mr. Wonka, Oompa Loompas can't get walnuts out of walnut shells in one piece. They always break them in two. Nobody except squirrels can get walnuts whole out of walnut shells every time. It is extremely difficult, but in my factory, I insist upon only whole walnuts. Therefore, I have to have squirrels do the job. Aren't they wonderful the way they get those nuts out? And see how they first tap each walnut with their knuckles to be sure it's not a bad one? And if it's bad, it makes a hollow sound and they don't bother to open it. They just throw it on down the garbage chute. There, look, watch that squirrel nearest to us. I think he's got a bad one now. They watched the little squirrel as he tapped the walnut shell with his knuckles. He cocked his head to one side, listening intently, and then he suddenly threw the nut over his shoulder into a large hole in the floor. Hey, mommy, shouted Virgil suddenly. I decided I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. Don't be silly, sweetheart, said Mrs. Salt. These all belong to Mr. Wonka. I don't care about that, shouted Vrook. I want one. All I've got at home is two dogs and four cats and six bunny rabbits and two parakeets and three canaries and a green parrot and a turtle and a bull of goldfish and a cage of waste mice and a silly old hamster. I want a squirrel. All right, all right, my pet, Mrs. Salt said soothingly. Mommy will get you a squirrel just as soon as she possibly can. But I don't want any old squirrel, Veruca shouted. I want a trained squirrel. At this point, Mr. Salt, Veruca's father, stepped forward. Very well, Wonka, he said importantly, taking out a wallet full of money. How much do you want for one of these uh, squirrels? Name your price. They're not for sale, Mr. Wonka answered. She can't have one. Who says I can't, shouted Veruca. I'm going to get myself with this very minute. What do we say about Veruca? Don't, said Mr. Wonka quickly, but he was too late. The girl had already thrown open the door and rushed in. The moment she entered the room, 100 squirrels stopped what they were doing and turned their heads and stared at her with small black beady eyes. Veruca Salt stopped also, stared back at them. Then her gaze fell upon a pretty little squirrel sitting nearest to her at the end of the table. The squirrel was holding a walnut in its paws. All right, Veruca said. I'll have you. She reached her hands out to grab the squirrel. But as she did so, in that first split second where her hands started to go forward, there was a sudden flash of movement in the room, like a flash of brown lightning, and every single squirrel on the table took a flying leap toward her and laid it on her body. Twenty-five of them caught hold of her right arm and pinned it down. Twenty-five more of them caught hold of her left arm and pinned that down. Twenty-five caught hold of her right leg and anchored it to the ground. And twenty-four caught hold of her left leg. The one remaining squirrel obviously the leader of them all, climbed up onto her shoulder and started tap, tap, tapping the wretched little girl's head with its knuckles. Save her! screamed Mrs. Salt. Veruca, come back! What are they doing to her? They're testing her to see if she's a bad nut, said Mr. Wonka. You watch. Veruca struggled furiously, but the squirrels held her tight and she couldn't move. The squirrel on her shoulder went tap, tap, tapping the side of her head with its knuckles. Then all at once, the squirrel pulled Veruca to the ground and started carrying her across the floor. Hmm, my goodness, she is a bad nut after all, said Mr. Wonka. Her head must have sounded quite hollow. Veruca kicked and screamed, but it was no use. The tiny strong paws held her very tightly and she couldn't escape. Where are they kicking her? shrieked Mrs. Schultz. 
She's going where all the other bad nuts go, said Mr. Willy Wonka. Down the garbage chute. By golly, she is going down the chute, said Mr. Salt, staring through the glass door at his daughter. Then save her, cried Mrs. Salt. Too late, said Mr. Wonka. She's gone. And indeed, she had. But where? Ah! Shrieked Mrs. Salt, flapping her arms. What happens to the bad nuts? Where does the chute go? That particular chute, Mr. Wonka told her, runs directly from the great big main garbage pipe, which carries away all the garbage from every part of the factory, all the floor sweepings and potato peelings and rotten cabbages and fish heads and stuff, all like that. Who eats fish and cabbage and potatoes in this factory, I'd like to know, said Mike TV. I do, of course, answered Mr. Wonka. You don't think I live on cacao beans, do you? But, 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 shrieked Mrs. Salt, where does the great big pipe go to in the end? Why, to the furnace, of course, Mr. Wonka said calmly, to the incinerator. Mrs. Salt opened her huge red mouth and she started to scream. Don't worry, said Mr. Wonka. Always, there's always a chance that they've decided not to light it today. A chance, yelled Mrs. Salt. My darling Veruca, she'll, she'll, she'll be sizzled like a sausage. Quite right, my dear, said Mr. Salt. Now see here, Wonka, he added. I think you've gone just a shade too far this time, I do indeed. My daughter may be a bit of a frump, I don't mind admitting it, but that doesn't mean you can roast her to a crisp. I'll have you know I'm extremely cross about this, I am. Oh, don't be cross, my dear sir, said Mr. Willy Wonka. I expect she'll turn up sooner or later again. She may not even gone all down at all. She may be stuck in the chute just below the entrance hole. Mm. And if that's the case, all you'll have to do is go in and pull her up again. Hearing this, both Mr. and Mrs. Salt dashed into the nut room and ran over to the hole in the floor and peered in. Veruca, shouted Mrs. Salt, are you down there? There was no answer. Mrs. Salt bent forward further to get a closer look. She was now kneeling right on the edge of the hole with her head down and her enormous behind sticking up in the air like a giant mushroom. It was a dangerous position to be in. She only needed one tiny little push, one gentle nudge in the right place. And that is exactly what the squirrels gave her. Over she toppled into the hole, head first screeching like a parrot. Good gracious me, said Mr. Salt as he watched his wife go tumbling down the hole. What a lot of garbage there's going to be today. He saw her disappearing into the darkness. What's it like down there, Angina? He called out. He leaned further forward, and the squirrels began to rush up behind him. Help! he shouted. But he was already toppling forward, and down the chute he went. Just as his wife had done before him and his wretched daughter. Oh dear, cried Charlie, who was watching with the others through the door. What on earth is going to happen to them now? I expect someone will catch them at the bottom of the chute, said Mr. Wonka. But what about the fiery incinerator, asked Charlie. They only light it every other day, said Mr. Wonka. Perhaps this is one of the days when they let go out. You never know. They might be lucky. Shh, said Grandpa Joe. Listen, here comes another song. From far away down the corridor began the beating of drums, and then the singing began. And I know this is your favorite part. Oompa Loompa songs. Veruca Salt sang the Oompa Loompas. Veruca Salt, the little brute, has just gone down the garbage chute. And as we very rightly thought that in a case like this we ought to see the thing completely through, we've polished off her parents too. Down goes Veruca down the drain, and here perhaps we should explain that she will meet as she descends a rather different set of friends to those that she has left behind. These won't be nearly so refined. A fish head, for example, cut this morning from a halibut. But hello, good morning, how'd you do? How nice to meet you, how are you? And then a little further down, a mass of others gather round. A bink and rind, some rancid lard, a loaf of bread gone stale and hard. A steak that nobody could chew, an oyster from an oyster stew. Some liver were so old and gray, one smelled it from a mile away. A rotten nut, a reeky pear, a thing the cat left on the stair. And lots of other things as well, each with a rather horrid 
smell. These are Veruca's newfound friend that she will meet as she descends. And this is the very price she has to pay for going so very far astray. But now, my dears, we think you might be wondering, is it really right that every single bit of blame and all the scolding and all the shame should fall upon Baruka Salt? Is she the only one at fault? For though she spoiled, and dreadfully so, as a girl can't spoil herself, you know, who spoiled her then? Ah, who indeed? Who pandered to her every need? Who turned her into such a brat? Who are the culprits? Who did that? Alas, you needn't look so far to find out who those sinners are. They are, and this is very sad, her loving parents, mom and dad. And that is why we are glad they fell into the garbage chute as well. Bottom. And that is the end of chapter 24. So now we've lost Augustus Gloop, we've lost Violet Beauregard, and we've lost Veruca Salt. Can you guys tell your parents and your brothers and sisters, if you have them, how we lost Augustus, how did we lose Violet, and how did we just lose Veruca? And if you can, see if you can try to remember some of the problems that Charlie has had along the way. I miss you guys very much. Have fun.